In this video, I want to provide an introduction to factor analysis. So first of all, I want to talk about what actually is the purpose of factor analysis. So the idea is that what we do have is we have a set of observed variables. So these are variables which we have data on. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to explain the, the variance and the covariance between those variables. Typically what we're doing is we're doing this using a sample. What we're trying to do is actually come up with a model for the population. And our model will explain the variance and covariance between these variables, these observed variables, by a set of typically fewer unobserved factors and weightings. So what exactly do I mean by that? It's probably best spoken about in realms of an example. So the idea is that we might have some data on a particular set of observed characteristics for people. We might have data from, let's say, samples uh, of whether individuals experience insomnia, whether they have suicidal thoughts, whether, let's say, they hyperventilate, and also we might have data on whether that individual typically feels nauseous most of the time. And this data might be, for example, the data on individuals who are admitted to psychiatric care. So typically with this data, we, we're dealing with a sample, right? We're not dealing with the entire population's data. And within that sample, there is a degree of variance and covariance between this set of variables. So for example, there might be some sort of covariance in our sample between insomnia and suicidal thoughts, which is, let's say, something like 0.3. And the idea is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with a model which will explain that covariance in the population. And the way in which factor analysis works is that we suppose that the variance and covariance structure in our observed characteristics is in part at least due to some unobserved factors. So the unobserved factors here might be whether an individual is depressed and whether that individual is experiencing some form of extreme anxiety. So we suppose that there are perhaps these two underlying factors which are responsible for the variance and covariance between all of these variables. So the idea is that these two factors, depression and anxiety, actually cause the variance and covariance between all of these observed factors. So there is a sort of weighting of depression on each of these observed characteristics, as well as a weighting of anxiety. So that's what each of these arrows mean. I'm just saying that these two particular unobserved factors actually have a causal effect on each of these actually observed characteristics. And typically the weightings which these unobserved characteristics have on these observed characteristics is different. So the weight of this first arrow, the amount to which depression causes insomnia, we might call, let's say, omega 1, 1. The one here, the first one indicating the fact that it's the first unobserved factor weighting on the first observed factor. And then this first blue arrow here, we might call omega 2, 1. So the two here now indicating that we're dealing with the second unobserved factor weighting on the first observed factor. So the idea is that there are a set of weights and there are a set of unobserved factors. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to estimate these weights and these unobserved factors. And I should mention now that these unobserved factors can themselves be correlated. And actually we can think about higher order models when these unobserved factors are actually caused by even sort of further down the chain, other unobserved factors. So what we can do is we can think about the variance of a given variable. So we might be thinking about the variance of insomnia across our sample. Uh, although typically what we're trying to do is we're trying to explain the variance in insomnia in the population, or, and we're trying to estimate that using our sample of data. So there, what we do is we suppose that there is a proportion of insomnia which is due to these shared unobserved factors. And we call this variance communality because it is the proportion of variance which is explained by a, a set of factors which are common to the other observed variables. But we also suppose that there is a proportion of insomnia which isn't explained by these unobserved factors. And this is something which we call the unique variance of that particular observed variable. It's unique in the sense that it is unique to that specific variable. And 
it's not caused by the common set of factors. And typically in factor analysis, we suppose that there are a set of unobserved variables, E1, let's say E2, E3, and E4 in this case, which themselves explain this unique variance of that particular factor. If these factors themselves, E1 and let's say E2, are themselves correlated, then we can also think about there being a proportion of covariance which is due to the shared factors and also a proportion of covariance which is due to these unique factors. So what are the uses of factor analysis? Well, the main sort of use of factor analysis is that which we've really talked about in this video. What we're trying to do is we're trying to explain the variance and the covariance between a set of observed characteristics in terms of typically a simpler structure. So what do I actually mean by a simpler structure here? The fact is we have, in this case, we have four observed characteristics and we're trying to explain the variance and covariance between these factors in terms of two unobserved factors. So notice that we've gone from a system where we had a dimensionality of four to that of two. So in that sense, we've made it simpler. So that's one of the uses of factor analysis. The other main use of factor analysis is, and typically in psychology, it's used for testing a particular theory. So there might be some sort of theoretical evidence which links depression and anxiety with each of these four characteristics. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually test whether it is actually likely the case that our theory holds up when we compare it to the data. The final use of factor analysis which comes to mind is that of dim dimensionality reduction. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we started off with a system of four variables and we're trying to esti estimate the variance and the covariance between those factors in terms of a system which is of lower dimensionality. So we started off with a system of four and now we replaced it with a system of two unobserved factors. And this concept of dimensionality reduction comes into the fore, typically in machine learning, where we have highly dimensional variables and we want to remove some of that dimensionality in order to improve partly the predictive power of a model and also to make the computation a little bit easier. 